Get the f*** out of here! <laughs> Go home! We don't want you here. We don't like your kind here. We only like people in blue cars around here. One more. Don't honk at me. <laughs> don't honk at me, asshole. <laughs> the gate is open. Time to go through. Are you ready for what's on the other side? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, God dang it. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Na 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 na. Ah oh, man, it it. Okay. How do you follow up a cult classic sci-fi film starring like starring one of the most like masculine human beings ever? Can Who's you it? just make an even more cult classic sci-fi film? Probably the. I'm not gonna say okay. Saying it's the greatest is I think a little bit. Uh, too much of superlative. It is one of the greatest action films of all time. Yeah. Period. Bar none. Hands down. It's some of the most creative people at the peak of their powers, literally just coming together and creating a masterclass that still stands up even over 30 years later. Going back to it, it still holds up. Like the visual effects still hold up, the the practical effects still hold up, the performances are great, the story is great, the direction of the film. It just, uh, Terminator Two: Judgment Day. For those of you who do not, or, growing up in the '90s and having that be one of your like inspirational like like thing for like action stuff, growing up as a kid, I didn't get that experience. That's fair. But so I actually only ever saw the scene that is this movie, right? With the nuke, the dream. Yes. Like, yeah, I saw the scene where the skeleton on the fence on TV as a kid, which scarred me a little bit. Oh, um, that's fair. <clears throat> but uh, I never actually watched the full movie until I was in college and rented it. Hmm. And what did you think watching it? I still thought it was badass. You know, exactly. Was it's it, it, New people can watch this film. And are st it's timeless. It, they do make references to like you know dates and you know, years and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's timeless. This is something that can be watched now or back then, or I think hell, twenty years from now, people can still watch this and be in awe of just the, how great the filmmaking is in this. And also, you know, it, it gave like the '90s some of the best, like "Hasta la vista, baby." It's like. Like, no problemo. Come with me if you want to live. Yeah. But to be fair, Reese said that in the first one. Did he? Yeah. But not in the accent, right? No. So, it's the accent. Fair enough. Fair. I, so, this, I think, is, like, the last truly great Terminator film. Third one was okay. The ending is what really made that film stand out, because I was like, the balls to actually follow through with that. I was like, no way. But ever since then, Terminator has been suffering from a bit of an identity crisis. And it's and some people have liked what's come out, you know, like Genesis, Salvation, um what was it the the most recent uh, Dark Fate, uh stuff like that. People have liked that, me. I just think they just need to stop at this point cuz that we already have two like two great films, and I think you know stopping here would be probably for the best. Oh, I also forgot to mention Stan Winston and his team working on this as well. I mean, got, dude, so many great like great people working on this film, and apparently Doug is going to regale us of it, and I guess is going to talk about a few things. Let's see, uh, let's see what he's got to say. Here we go. Actually, watch him start this up and be like, "This film's overrated." What? I'm, jo I'm <laughs> joking. No, no I'm joking. I know I... Doug loves this film. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, you know what? Also, I forgot something. Uh -huh. Okay. Holy shit! Really? Yes. <laughs> yes. Apparently so. 
So, this happened. Nate Hamilton, nostalgia critic here, reacting to you this time. Yeah, that's right. Don't think I haven't seen your channel before. Mm -hmm, yeah, I know you think just because you're sitting around on a comfy chair watching stuff online, suddenly you deserve people watching you watching other people. Well, you know what? This won't stand. This will not stand. Aww. So here's what I want you to do, okay? I want you to get this butt ugly outfit that I'm wearing right now I want you to wear it next time you watch one of my videos so that way I can sue you because oh, oh come on Doug <laughs> that's the thing as well I've been saving this I haven't seen this oh, I haven't oh, seen amazing. this I was, I was just like no way no way someone actually did this I was gonna ask do you have the outfit Scott? not yet no Man. I need to get the I I have a jacket I have the like like the, the suit jacket, and I can get a red tie like that. The hat, uh, but glasses. I, I don't wear glasses, so I could probably get some reading glasses that look similar. Be right, you can't replicate it. I want you to be sure to get some glasses that have no real glass in it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I had no fucking idea. Damn it, Doug. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you to be on top of that, man, because I'm just going to take you for all that you got. Uh, I don't have well, that let's much, say, Doug. Uh, for, you know, to just argument's sake, that uh, I was a little nicer than that, and maybe I wasn't going to sue you. Uh, maybe I would give you a compliment and say, you know, actually, I do like kind of watching some of your reactions because, you know, I don't really get a chance to always see how people react to my <laughs> videos because you make them and you put them out there and you can't really see, you know, somebody laughing or just that initial gut reaction <laughs> to something. So, Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool to witness. It's kind of cool to see. But obviously, that's not me at all. Not even in the slightest. I am a complete asshole. So I'm <laughs> court. Take care. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> Seriously, <laughs> thank you so much for the cameo because the money doesn't go to me. It goes to charity. It goes to Lurie's Children's Hospital. So thank you so very, very much for that. And yeah, you guys have been going for a while, man, right? I think that's really, really cool. And yeah. I really do mean that. I do not get a chance uh, to usually see people's reactions uh, to my videos. Like I said, at least a live reaction. So it's really, really cool to see. And every single time I see you guys uh, react to it, it feels genuine. It doesn't feel like you're like putting on anything thing or it, it, like a, a facade or a show or anything like that it just really feels like you're giving your real genuine reaction and talking how like people talk when they watch something so i really like your stuff man and uh thank you so much for you know uh <laughs> watching my stuff in terms of like you know just getting it out there as well for other people to see blah 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 i'm just rambling now uh i really wish you nothing yeah, but the best man time. and maybe i'll see you someday in the future take care <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. that's freaking that's cool. super cool. <laughs> yes, so leaving a, uh, I yeah, I don't have a cameo. Nate account. Hamilton. Yeah, that's me. I know, I know, Doug. I know. Oh man, hell yeah. But yeah, uh, James Moyner did that for us, and thank you, James, so much for uh, setting that up for us, and also you know. So when he sues you in court, and he just kind of like breezes by, you're gonna reach out and try and touch the hem of the blazer. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Either that, either that, or I'll just be like, be like Doug, Doug, the one and only Doug. Like, may may like, I please, may I please actually fix your tie? Kiss, for you? like kiss the ring. <laughs> no, kiss the tip of the tie. Just like the tie, just like. Because <laughs> the... now I think Doug, I think the only ring that Doug has on is like his wedding ring. Or just like, fix the tie and you lean in and you just go. Your hair smells different when you're awake. And just. <laughs> and Doug will rip his hat off and be like, "What hair?" Because <laughs> he's he's been shaving his head bald now for the last few years. <laughs> also, Doug had. Right, one by of the way, if you guys were wondering, I am actually blind. So there's there's yeah. glass in there. There's actually glass in these glasses. <laughs> no, I have a fingerprint on. <laughs> yeah, there's glass in their glasses. Yeah. Uh, that is hilarious. That's, That's like the fridge thing for me. I was like, oh, wait, wait, he doesn't actually have glass in his glasses? I feel like we've learned like the something. There is no fridge. I feel like, like we've learned something we're not supposed to know. Right? Uh, <laughs> I think he's exposed Or I feel like we times. have like a piece of information that like not everybody else has at least. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly. Did, didn't he do one where he like stood up and he wasn't actually wearing pants? He was just in boxers. Yes. <laughs> it's like one of those deals. Yes. Yeah. I can I can definitely see that. I know that there are people who you know say you know he's controversial this and that blah blah blah. It's like I don't care. I, Doug has always been someone that I I find inspiration in whenever it comes to 
you know, creating content and just wanting to form your own business and everything. But the thing is, though, he's not controversial just for the sake of being controversial. Like, no. he, he lays out why he thinks a certain way. Yeah. And it's usually pretty well laid out. So it's like, agree with him or don't, but it's not like he doesn't back well, it up. Also, other behind the scenes things that people are pissed about, oh. too. Like, well, a lot the behind of which the scenes that, been proven. Like, well, no, and that's the thing. Doug came out, like, he came out with a response and basically showed, like, with receipts, like, how everything that was levied against him and Channel Awesome was false. No, I mean, and I'm either just that like, or it wasn't his fault. Yeah, either that or, yeah, exactly. And, oh yeah, also another thing about Doug is, uh, a lot of people would assume like uh, their uh, Oni Oni plays makes fun of him and does like a really good impression of like Doug screaming and all that, and everyone would assume that Doug is just like really upset about it. Oh, I would love that. Oh, oh yeah. Here's yeah. well, here let's see, Doug Walker, Oni, yeah, Oni plays. So this is uh, his response <laughs> to it. His response to it is this right here. Uh, yeah, this is when he was on a podcast Michael with uh, Double Toast. Oni plays, you know, you, you, people have given you some slight ribbing, you know, people have teased you a little bit, mocked you in a fun way. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Here's someone doing your screen. This is Oni Plays doing your screen. Do Doug Walker yelling. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you've always had a good sense of humor about <laughs> See? <laughs> Scream loud! I mean, it really does sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, 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 like we see right now, you've had uh, you have a good sense of uh, a per, a, a sense of humor about it, man. You know, you. Oh, well, how hypocritical would it be if I'm like, look at this person who doesn't appreciate my art when I literally make a living mocking people's art? Like, how yeah, hypocritical yeah. would that be? Um, yeah, he's right. I mean, it's true. I- but also, the, a kick-ass T-shirt, though. Yes, yeah, the Ed, the Ed T-shirt is is awesome. I too have a couple of Cowboy Bebop T-shirts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, but, unpopular opinion: I have a Cowboy Bebop T-shirt. It doesn't have Radical Edward on it. Ah, uh, yours is the Swordfish. I, I do have the Swordfish. One, I remember one of that. One has it on it. Yeah, I, I've got a Cowboy Bebop shirt. I think it's like the collective cast, but I don't think I can wear it anymore because you know. <laughs> uh, my body is not my best friend, but um, yeah, the thing with Doug is just he—it's he, like us. People make fun of us. It's just like that one dude, uh, uh, Boris, uh, uh, the guy who does the anime. Like, uh, what was it? The uh, Eighth Night of Eights, uh, Dungeon Dynamite. I don't know if you remember that. They actually put us in there. We were in the as, audience. Yeah, we were like yeah. sitting up front, and this is like. At first, I thought you were talking about the um, that one guy that did the little animations that asked us to stop reacting. I can't remember. No, oh, that was Joe Cat. Yeah, Joe Cat well, uh, did that. No, the terminal montage. Oh, yes. well, no, terminal uh-huh. montage. He's just he softened on his stance on reaction videos, and I think he's just accepted. It's like it's part of the internet culture. Mm-hmm. Like, there's nothing that can really be done about it. And though terminal montage has his opinions on it, I still respect terminal montage for just like cranking out the work that he does and that's the thing i my stance has softened on several things too over time and what's the point of holding a grudge like that especially whenever you know people's opinions change the world changes around you and there's not really anything you can do about it because they're secretly terminators and they're programmed to hold that grudge yes so you're bringing it back around yes here we go (laughs) i forgot what we're doing for a second Ah! our sound system is already messing up might want to turn the video itself down just a smidgen. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Apologies, <clears throat> you've caught me in the middle of kind of an embarrassing therapy session. Now, now, Critic, there's nothing wrong with therapy. <laughs> this just seems so silly. Critic, as the world's most sought-after first-world problem psychiatrist, <laughs> I've heard it yeah. all. 
Dr. Pity, your five o'clock says her best friend didn't like her Instagram post. Tell her that's a class two emergency. I'm only taking class threes for now. I just have what seems like a little problem, but I just know I'm blowing it out of proportion. Dr. Pity, your <coughs> six o'clock says a Starbucks barista got his name wrong. Move him up to four. How do you deal with something like this? Well, have you portrayed yourself as both the hero and the victim? Yes. Have you complained on social media instead of talking to friends? Of course. Have you mm. declared your life is just like that drama Curb Your Enthusiasm? Yes, yes, I've done all of that. <laughs> Dr. Pity, your two o'clock says they saw a black person in the park. And? That's it. Tell her to drink a bottle of Raid and all will be right with the world. <laughs> is there any hope for me? I agree with that. Well, I don't think you've said yet what the actual problem is. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. You see, I started Terminator Month, and Terminator 2 might be too perfect a movie for me to critique. Then. then Did you hear that description what? of Raid I gave earlier? Yeah. So you probably <laughs> wouldn't fall for that. I'm going to say no. Ah. <laughs> wow. There's a bit of a stigma against action movies. No, oh, not from the general public, they're popular as hell. I'm talking about with critics and film historians. Mm -hmm. While everyone agrees they're often a lot of fun, they're not given much attention as great art. There are some that break the mold, pushing complex stories and characters, but for the most part, action films are seen as just an enjoyable waste of time. This is a shame because 1991's Terminator 2 Judgment Day is about as flawless an action film as you can get. Big on mind-blowing ideas? Not especially. Characters as complex as Tennessee Williams? I wouldn't go that far. But think of comedies that Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin did. Some are deep and meaningful, but others just give people a good time in the most spectacular way, and yeah. they're hailed as classics. Terminator 2 is a classic in the same way. It pushes the envelope not just in technology, but also stuns, imagination, and clever storytelling. It's one of those films that's hard to find anything wrong with it. And this is a movie that stars the Jingle All The Way guy as an intimidating killing machine <laughs> with an accent nobody ever questions. I enjoy using comedy as a means to review something because I think it can offer a unique and interesting point of view. But I'm not gonna lie, it's gotta be tricky using comedy to review something that I think is virtually flawless. Well, critic, <clears throat> the answer is clear. Just do your best to review it. You think so? Yes. If it doesn't work, the internet is always open and kind. I'm sure they'll think <laughs> 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 underestimate the loving nature of online culture. So oh, yes. <laughs> ah, the internet is undefeated and is ruthless. Mm. So give it your best and never call here again. Will do, Doctor. Doctor Pity, your one o'clock says he had to make small talk and didn't know what to talk about. Cancel all my appointments. I'll see him right away. Yes, Doctor. Hello? I'm listening. She said she never saw any of my movies. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Let's take a look at what I consider an action <laughs> masterpiece. This is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. The film opens familiarly enough with the future still being in ashes. I think this film had a bit more of a budget than 6.5 million this time. Three billion human lives ended on August 29th, 1997. We didn't think releasing Airbud would have this big an effect. <laughs> <laughs> the film does a good job catching you up and honestly works as a standalone sequel. Many people, including myself, saw this one prior to the first film. Same! My only Same. criticism, it does way too good a job making me want to play the arcade game again. <laughs> oh my god. So good. I could have gone to college twice with the amount of quarters that thing guzzled. <laughs> Skynet yeah. sent two Terminators back it's like to, me with House of the to Dead. destroy the leader yeah. of the human resistance, Same. John Connor. Oh, whoops, our bad. This resistance is led by John Walsh. Police need your help to find a convicted killer. After an opening credit sequence of, again, truly unforgettable imagery, we cut to 1991 where the Terminator, played again by Schwarzenegger, is sent back to, well, do some shopping. <laughs> One of the things I don't think this movie gets enough credit for, the extras are amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in the best movies, you find some actors who say a line a little weird, but everybody in this is 100% believable. Most films would have everybody react the same way to something like this, but everyone has a unique reaction. Some are shocked, some are confused. Many aroused. Oh. <laughs> Told you we were having Austrian Wiener Schnitzel tonight. Aw, oh, she takes the clothes from one of the bikers and... <laughs> Let me make it clear, there was a time when this song was not only used for kid troublemaker movies. And this yes. was after that, but You Could Be Mine song was a better choice. Like before, somebody else I, is sent back. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it, dude. 
Bad to the Bone is still a great song. Yep. It's still fucking amazing. But, it, you know, nowadays it's used in the meme. Yeah. Yeah, I just see, like, anytime you see a skeleton, bah, nah, 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 nah. yeah, it's like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> played by Robert Patrick. This film does a good job tricking you into thinking Arnold is still the bad guy and Patrick is the human hero. Notice, it just looks like he knocks out the cop. We don't know he can change into anything. The clothes you assume he stole as opposed to shapeshift. And even his mannerisms are a lot more human compared to the other Terminators. He's a good looking boy. Do you mind if I keep this picture? No, go on. For a lot of people, it's a legit surprise when Arnold says get down, as up to that point, you could easily see either as the hero or villain. Yes. This brings us to a young John Connor, played by Eddie Furlong, whose step-parents are not thrilled about his rebellious ways. I swear I have had it with that goddamn kid. Todd! What? What? He hasn't cleaned that room of his in a month. Well, you dip brown face in aliens. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Please insert your stolen card true. now. Draw I did not three, realize zero, that. Zero. Little does he know his best friend utilizes this hacking technique to become the world's youngest millionaire. Morning, Sarah. We're then reintroduced to Sarah Connor, played again by Linda Hamilton. And you know how in the last film the psychiatrist said this? This is great stuff. I could make a career out of this guy. Well, I think he did, as he's now one of the head honchos in this mental institution and is probably making even more money on the committed Connor saying the exact same thing. I'm sure it feels very real to you. On August 29th, 1997, it's gonna feel pretty fucking real to you, too. At first, I was annoyed that she was saying the exact same thing that clearly didn't work for the committed Reese. But the more I thought about it, being the only person who knows when the apocalypse is and lying about it for many years, you would probably crack at some point. In yeah. fact, this is one of the few films that repeats a lot of similar lines and actions from the previous movie, but it feels totally natural. When you hear lines in Home Alone 2 like, Yikes, I did it again. Well, you got your wish last year, maybe you'll get it again this year. This ain't like the last time. We did it again! It feels forced <laughs> and phony. So many sequels do this yeah. just so you can say, I recognize that thing that was good before, therefore this is good. But in this, it surprisingly feels organic. When they pause the video at a similar time they did with Reese in the first movie, she remembers and knows she has to change her game plan. They don't exist. I know that now. When Arnold says, Come with me if you want to live. It shows her he's the good guy, but in the most ironic form as what was trying to kill her in the last film. Even the climax. Driving two vehicles, they crash, and they have to get two new vehicles, resulting in a surprise climax when you think it wrapped up. All of this works because so many of the roles are flipped. Like they all have a chance to relive these moments and do them right redeeming themselves and even the future of humanity. Mm. There's only one that feels a little gimmicky. I'll be back. But would you be happier with... Talk to the hand. Million <laughs> stars. <laughs> with that said, their actions don't always work, as Sarah pretends the Terminator is a delusion, but the Doctor isn't falling for it. I don't see any choice but to recommend you stay here for another six months. Let's see what happens when we take away the puppy. <laughs> Similar response. I'm all the Terminator and T-1000 search for John, and I'm not gonna lie, I really <coughs> wish I could have seen the scene where Arno bought those roses. Yes, I would like a dozen roses, please. <laughs> <laughs> From the room! Be no! <laughs> Hold on. A dozen roses, please. Here you go. That's me. It'll be $18. Wrong. It'll be $18. Wrong. Bang. <laughs> John plays Afterburner, oh my bad, Star Commando, I always confuse the two. As his friend notices, a cop is scoping for him. Man, there's this cop scoping for you, check it out. They found out what we did at Camp Anawana. I knew there was going to be a reference to that, because that's Bobby <laughs> Budnick. Damn. Anyone else grow up hating this kid? You had one line, and you used it to be a narc. Enjoy your stitches. Ow. Oh, and you think Batman was the biggest sellout for McDonald's? How about a scene for the Guns N' Roses video that literally has Guns N' Roses? That's like Weekend at Bernie's, literally putting the Weekend at Bernie's. Aww. Hey, hey! Get down. <laughs> Admit it, you always felt sorry for that guy, too. Yeah. The moral of the yeah, film is if you ever try to him. do anything good ever, you're gonna bleed. Yeah. The two Terminators fight with the T-1000 knocking him out. Ooh, the latest foreshadow fashion. And he Tom Cruise runs trying to catch up to John. Yeah. He also might have upgraded his ride. <laughs> 
fun fact, none of the camera crew wanted to get this shot for fear of, well, Death. dying. Yeah. So Cameron grabbed the camera and took the shot himself. Oh, 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 oh. balls, man. That's someone who believes in, like, is dedicated to his craft. Also, also, little, uh, little kerfuffle dying. here so Cameron with, uh, right, right here, the front windows come out. Mm -hmm. And later on in the scene, fact, dude, the that's such a that's shot. such a cool shot. I'm not gonna knock. No, I, I ain't holding it against it. I am not holding it against it in the slightest. The only criticism I have is I wish that he photoshopped James Cameron's face over Thanos, and he's like, "Fine, I'll do it myself." <laughs> but he's reaching for a camera and still the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> grab, <laughs> just grabs a camera. Not himself. Sports stores don't have as many balls as this guy. Well, some shots you can make out the stuff. Yeah, a bit. that's hey, I that's wearing an Arnold mask. In this. The chase is still amazing, from yes. the size and scale to the energized editing to that gun trick you gave up trying after two times. No, I figured out how to do that. I figured out how to do that with a Winchester 1887. No, seriously, I got this. It's all CG. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but you are a Terminator, right? Yes, Sabaton Systems Model 101. 101. Holy shit. Something else that's important to point out, the kid in this movie is actually, like, a real kid. Yes. That's not to say this is the first time this has been done, but more often than not, kids in movies were either there for bad one-liners or just to move the story forward. This one acts like a real kid in the 90s. Hell, honestly, any time period. That her? Yes. She's pretty cool, huh? No, she's a complete psycho. It's not a mission priority. You will fuck you! She's a priority to me! He swears, he can be afraid, he fights back, he has legit good insults. He's a little shit, but that's what most kids are around that age. <laughs> yes. He's yeah. played in a way that doesn't get annoying and is extremely relatable, giving him real moments to come to grips with what this new reality means about everything he ever knew. It's like everything I've been brought to believe was all made of bullshit. I hated her for that, and nobody believed her. Not even me. After this film, this was the gold standard in writing a believable child in a mainstream movie. Yeah. Even give him credit when he tries saving his step-parents despite not liking them. If you hurry home, we can sit down and have dinner together. I'm making beef stew. But something seems off when the dog keeps barking. Again, a good callback to the first film. Honey, are you okay? I'm right here. I'm fine. Huh. Wonder why you can't do an American accent the rest of the time. <laughs> First, the parents are dead. And the T-1000 has learned how to make beef stew. Seriously, why does he know how to do that? After teaching the stepdad not to drink out of the carton, the T-1000 continues his search while John figures out the Terminator. Also, there was a deleted scene in the director's cut where the T-1000 actually went out and killed the dog and, like, ripped the dog collar off of him and saw that the dog's name was Max, and that's how he knew that the, T the T-800 was you know, was the one that was responding to him. And it, and James cut that out because he, you know, he felt like it didn't need to be there. It didn't drag the scene down or anything like that, but yet, you know, cutting out little bits here, like, that's why I, I look back on some of the stuff that's in the director's cut, and I'm just like, I really wish they would have kept that in, but yet I understand why it's gone, because in some cases you need to be ruthless as an editor to cut stuff out to make the pace stay at at a great at a great rate because this is one of the best paced films ever. I mean the pacing, the, the everything about this film is freaking great, dude. Who am I kidding? Or technically has to do anything he says. That's one of my mission parameters. Stand on one foot. <laughs> yes. Now say Red Sonia what's your best movie. Don't push it, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> God, Red Sonja is yeah. so bad. Yeah. It is so bad. I also like this reversal where the kid has to be the adult teaching him why it's wrong to kill. You just can't go around killing people. Why? Because you can't. <laughs> why? Because you just can't. Why? I order you to help me. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> John decides to break his mother out of the institution as it looks like Sarah has the same idea. Oh. After this weird scene. Boof. Mmm, tastes like peaking in the 90s. She uh, escapes with a paperclip and the cutest little skip. Come on, you didn't show the scene of her breaking that asshole's nose and, like, knocking him cold. That's easily one of, like, 
Yeah, it's easily like one of the best parts of like her breakout is just like her coming around the corner with the broken mop handle and just cow smacking the dude right in the noggin. <laughs> oh, I love that scene. But meanwhile, the T-1000 tries sneaking in so he can take her out to replace her. Did I mention the CG in this really holds up? Yes. Sometimes it looks a little shoddy, but for friggin' 1991, yeah. this looks better than some CG effects you see today. Yes. Hey, mm -hmm. I got a full house. Wait until I tell Mr. Clamp. I kind of admire that this is shot like a split screen. Almost like they're indicating they use the same actor to play both parts, but then get shots like this where you realize it had to be twins. Only later to actually duplicate the same actor. This film's goddamn amazing. Uh, what? No, no, that, that's that, that's Linda Hamilton's twin sister. No, really. Oh, she has a twin. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Linda Hamilton has a twin. Yeah, she was Linda's uh, stand-in double for her on a lot of films. Huh. Yeah, unfortunately, she died recently. Uh, oh. She died from like lung cancer, I think. That's um, crazy. But I didn't know that either until like I I looked up like special features about Terminator Two, and I was just like. I was like, I wonder how they did this. Did they do masking? Did they do like a did they do like a body double that they just like CG'd her face before she said anything so they didn't have to like mimic mouth movements? And I was like, oh no, that was actually her twin sister. I feel like James Cameron's like casting call. Do you have an identical twin? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think by this well, I don't think by well by this point him and Linda Hamilton were in a relationship together. They were married at one point. And I think it was after Titanic, they got divorced, and she got a huge settlement check uh, for that. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's actually something um, a lot of people didn't know about about that scene, and a lot of like Linda Hamilton's roles, like her sister was like her stand-in double, and in some cases, her uh, like uh, her stunt double, like whenever she needed to, like take a pratfall or something like that. Yeah, but anyway, sorry. did James Cameron did he, did James Cameron get remarried? Uh, eventually, yes. Did he remarry with her twin sister? That'd be kind of weird, right? I ha damn it! Now I gotta look it up. <laughs> damn it, dude! You 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 just had to. Mm. James Cameron. Okay. He's like one of those weird guys that wants redundancies and everything, so he marries a twin. Okay. No, actually, oh, it was the relationship with Linda Hamilton that caused his marriage with Catherine Bigelow to fall apart. But Gail Ann Hurd, you know the you know the one of the producers for the first uh, first Terminator movie. Then Catherine Bigelow, uh, who went on to do a lot of really good films. Linda Hamilton, and no. Currently he is married to Susie Amis. Susie Am What was she in? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh! Huh. She's, she was uh, Miss Calvert. She was... That's Rose's mother. Or no, no, that's Rose's. Uh, that's Rose's uh, granddaughter. Remember the granddaughter that came with her onto the ship, and yeah, that uh, came up. Ah, oh, man. I was, sorry about that. John and the Terminator show up shortly after. Gotta promise me you're not gonna kill anyone, right? Why? I swear I will not kill anyone. Well, thanks, Skynet, for loopholes. What the hell are you doing? He'll live. He'll live. In other news today, a security guard died due to loss of blood in his legs. Sad and weird. <laughs> this reunion will be great. No! 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 This is exactly how it went when they asked her to do Dark Fate. Help her! Wait here. He shoots her in the legs. She'll live. No! I like oh. that all these guys are clearly knocked out hard, but the security guard is given this treatment. Ah. Talk well, to the I'm down for the count. Oh, am I kidding? I'm just not paid enough to deal with shit like this. It's okay, Mom. He's here now. Garbage. It's okay. Oh, okay. Chef convinces her that it's okay until it's not okay. Yeah. And meanwhile, the internet is like, that's good, but it needs more Homer and a bush. Oh. As good as the CG effects are, the practical effects are even more mind blowing. As every time the T1000. <laughs> I see what you apart, did there, Doug. Even more mind blowing. Proceeds to literally get his head split in two. <laughs> Boys, a practical effect. That, that means is this, awesome. this, and even this were all shot in front of the camera. 
For as groundbreaking as the CG is, they knew they had to combine it with other effects because the eye would get too used to it and would start to look phony. Like, mm -hmm. sadly, so much CGI has today because uh... it's been so overused. They fight off the T-1000 and don't take any chances with parts left over. Which is why I want to see Oppenheimer as well, because Oppenheimer, basically, uh, Nolan has said there is no CGI in this film. <laughs> there's only the only thing that is CGI. He said there's CGI touch-ups here and there on like some scenery, but other than that, everything is 100% practical. How the hell do they do a practical nuclear explosion? They kind of got in trouble for it. I'm not joking. They actually did. A controlled nuclear explosion at a testing facility. Wow. Yes. Whoa. That's that's how dedicated he was to making this. Thank God, I won't have to stuff down there now. Yeah, I'm going out on a dick joke. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say nothing, Doug. Dick jokes can be funny. Let's see. And now back to our regular scheduled program. I'm so glad after Angry I Man yells about the effects are we get arguably the worst rear projection in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's like City and that was Tarantino pretty took over directing for a bit. Hamilton doesn't have any shoes on. What were you thinking? You cannot risk yourself even for me. Do you understand? Sarah gives John a hard time for coming to save her, causing him to tear up. What's wrong with your eyes? Nothing. I always found it odd that a machine based on biological termination doesn't know what crying is. Though maybe the idea is he knows how, just not why. Either way, what's a girly man? So what's your story? <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, the T-1000 searches for a new vehicle. Say, that's a nice bike. Well, we have the shtick for the next Terminator all set up. I guess it doesn't help that after I praise the kid dialogue too, these couple of lines here do seem a little Disney afternoon. You say, no problemo. And if you want to shine them on, it's hasta la vista, baby. He got 98% of it down when some can't even get 1% of it down. I say, Ouch. Slack. I also say, blame the director, because George Lucas is a great, like, story crafter and a great world builder. The man is not good at directing kids. No. Period. Or adults. Most of the time. I, I will say... He did really good with the first Star Wars. But I think that was because he kind of had to make sure that the acting was was at a certain level. Otherwise, it would not have been as impactful as it was. But anyway, sorry. My God, he actually got to the chopper. I you! No, you didn't! I know I said this film doesn't have the deepest ideas, but that doesn't mean it has none at all. There are some very poignant moments that arguably need to be in a film like this if it's to hold any weight or suspense. We're not gonna make it, are we? People, I mean. It's in your nature to destroy yourselves. Just look at where the franchise goes. Mm. Uh. Well, back to making guns look like the coolest goddamn thing in the world. It's definitely you. <laughs> John does continue to bond with the Terminator, forcing Sarah to think back at all the deadbeat she dated in the past. It would never leave him, never shout at him, or get drunk and hit him. This machine was the only one who measured up. It gives me hope that vibrator technology will advance to raising kids too, then I'd be set. She has, honestly, one of the freakiest dream sequences I can remember growing up. Yes. When she sees her past self raising John in what could have been an alternate life. That uniform makes your calves look chunky! Oh, and the nightmare fuel. Okay, I did that for a reason. To show that a quick cut could still be effective. What's interesting about Cameron, though, is he not only takes it several steps further, but it's several expensive steps further. It isn't just a bright light. It's people set ablaze, the city explodes, countless models are fried, people are nuked into ashes, and even blowing up one of the leads isn't enough. You gotta see her goddamn skeleton. I can't mm -hmm. fathom.
them how much a scene like this caused that easily could have been edited out. Yeah. But you do remember it more. And these images constantly remind you what's at risk and why so many of the grislier scenes are justified. So much so that Sarah's going after the man who's developing the Skynet technology based on the pieces the first Terminator left behind, Miles Dyson, played by Joe Morton. Oh, they also cut the car chase budget down quite a bit. Damn it. Right. Stop him before he's a part of a horrible monstrosity! Oh! John and the Terminator show up and try to stop her, not realizing she herself couldn't go through with the act. Look at me, Mom. Are you hurt? You got the wrong house! This is Miles Tyson from the Frozen Meats Company! <laughs> On the plus side, we might leave with some buffalo chicken dip. It'll be okay. I'll be okay. Figure something out, okay? I really dig this moment where again the roles are switched and John has to be the parent for a moment comforting her. Quite different to how she's been treating him throughout half the film. Mm. But let's face it, what you remember about this scene is the arm moment. Yeah. <laughs> My god, these effects! Yep. Yes! Again, you know this would all be done with CG today, but knowing they built that arm to look like a real human arm and have an operating mechanical arm under it in the same shot? It's insane the attention to detail this movie has. Now listen to me very carefully. Put the cookie down. <laughs> <laughs> catch Dyson up to speed God, and it's it. decided they're all gonna destroy the Skynet technology before it has a chance to destroy humanity. Unfortunately, the guards spot them and they call in as many cops as possible, leading to one of the funnier lines in the movie. We got company. Police? How many? All of them, I think. They're led by <laughs> Captain Kitchen Sink. The Terminator says he'll take care of them without killing anyone. And I had to cross my legs for this scene because this moment gets me so friggin' hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, come on! An ac any action movie fan with a beating heart and a pulse cannot look away from this scene. This scene is so good. The grenade launcher, the minigun, ev the explosions, everything just hits so good. Oh. Oh, it's like if a gun and a punch could have an orgasm. <laughs> oh, uh, something about we're not gonna make it. Violence will be our downfall. Whatever. Guns, guns, guns! Now, now, now! <laughs> yes! They're set to blow up the place, but are stopped before setting it off. Well, that's a 1991 LA cop moment. <laughs> The others escape, leaving Dyson's literal last breath, setting off the explosions. Again, I let you feel bad whenever somebody dies in this movie. Yeah. It's like the anti-Wachowski method. True. The T-1000 works his way in, though, as they work their way out. Get down on the floor and face down! Down on the floor now! Funny, you didn't give that warning to the NR man upstairs, but the guy literally covered in bullets? We should follow the book on this one. He crabs himself an Amazon delivery truck and they drive off with a T-1000 not far behind. Get out. Tell my wife I died fighting a Capri Sun commercial! Chopper's coming in! It's him. He chases them down, shooting at them while he forms a third arm to fly. At least, I hope that's a third arm. And again, we put <laughs> one of the coolest action scenes ever. Yeah. I still have trouble convincing younger people sometimes that they really did all this. No CG, no removed wires, no models. They just flew a goddamn copter under bridges, over bridges, even into a truck. Yeah. Goddamn unbelievable. The only thing that can make this seem better is this music. Practical effects, man. Yep. Practical effects and practical like like chases like this don't get me wrong i loved winter soldier i loved uh you know the chase scene on the highway with bucky ripping the steering wheel out and a lot of that stuff but so much of that is just fake because it has to be because you have to protect your actors but at the same time i really would have loved to have seen if they would have done practical car crashes and stunt people like flying on top of those uh car doors and you know just like i would love to have seen that but 
Unfortunately, it... To be honest, self-driving technology might be able to bring back practical effects without putting people at risk in the future for certain scenes like this. Maybe. You'd probably just have to put a dummy in the front seat and do CG touch-up to make it look mm -hmm. like the person driving. I mean, practical effects artists could make, like, really realistic, like, busts of people and stuff, you know? So true, true. As long yeah. as you shoot it from an angle that it doesn't show that they're static for too long, you know? Yeah, because I was going to say, imagine the car crash, and you like, see the car crash and everything, and you see the dummy in the front seat just like this. Yeah. Just like making the same face throughout the whole thing. <laughs> That's when the practical effects actually play against the believability. Yeah, I'll just find an angle that doesn't have that. Oh, for God's sakes! <laughs> Crash and have to get different vehicles, resulting in my personal favorite badass moment. Yeah. That was actually Arnold. That was actually Arnold who ran across onto the hood of that truck. The T-1000 gets frozen from the liquid nitrogen truck he was driving, leading to a line so famous, I don't think it needs any introduction. What killed the dinosaurs? <laughs> the Ice Age! Knew it! I've <laughs> that for years. But the heat starts to melt the pieces together. I never got why they couldn't just kick them somewhere else. And they tried to get their injured self. Or shovel them into the lava pit. Or, you know, the steel pit. Plus to safety. It's funny, I always assumed the T-1000 was acting cocky, taking his time, but this dude was frozen. Maybe he's still just thawing out. Oh, yeah, that's frozen. the thing I did, anyway. Actually, they did show, uh, you know, like, the, like, uh, they actually show uh, in the director's cut how he is experiencing issues with, like, his processor, like, trying to, like, make stuff and trying to maintain his form because of the the ice because of being frozen like that and uh they i wish they would have kept that in like that one little shot of him like having an issue like like attack like attaching onto something and not being able to like let go and he's like hmm and then they show another one later on whenever he's he's like got arnold locked up you know like his arms stuck in the gear and he like turns away to go find john and uh sarah and like his like he does like the silver like it goes like up a little bit you know like the silver like shows a little bit gets goes like it it that's another thing to show that he's experiencing issues but also yeah the t1000 kills the terminator but he has a backup the t1000 didn't know about all right and he tries <laughs> to take sarah's form to trick john <laughs> which one do i shoot Oh, good. One of them will do it for me. They almost knock him into the lava, but no more bullets. See, I can have quips too. But the Terminator, of course, arrives in time and blows him to hell. Which I think is where you would see some of this imagery. <laughs> yeah. That is nightmare fuel, and I love it. I love this weird-ass sound it makes that it's never made before. Did step on a hive of spider witches? What was that? Yeah. <laughs> I like he tries to replicate everything he's transformed into to try and figure a way out, and it also makes him hauntingly surreal nightmare fuel. <laughs> Why couldn't this be the Navi's design? Now that would look truly <laughs> alien. <laughs> oh, man. We'd like to thank James Cameron for becoming Terry Gilliam for a few minutes. I need a vacation. And Joss Whedon. They burn the material that could give birth to Skynet. Hey, what about the other arm? Don't worry about it, the sequels don't. But it's revealed <laughs> that it'll never be fully prevented unless the- That would actually be a good tie-in for the third one. It's just like, oh my god, we forgot about that one. It's like, that could have actually been the tie-in that could have made the third one make more sense in terms of why Judgment Day kept coming. It... Damn it. The Terminator himself is Terminator. I know now why you cry, but it's something I can never do. I just learned to do comedy. Tears is not part of the Arnold package. <laughs> He's slowly lowered into the lava. Alien 3 finally knows what to rip its ending off of. And yeah. he begins his own Siskel Niebuhr review of the movie going down. It's okay, honey. We'll just buy you a new Terminator. Or it won't be the same. Something. 
The film ends with the uncertain future rolling ahead, not sure if what they did will save humanity or not. Which is quite different from the original ending they had where they clarified the future is 100% safe. 1997 came and went. Nothing much happened. Michael Jackson turned 40. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he lived to see 50, but, but that was it. Mm, yeah. Uh, also, this is Washington, D this is Washington, D.C. Um, damn, y'all had some very strong, uh, like, positive ideals of what D.C. would look like. <laughs> he looks like he has 10 more years in him. Oh, it's funny because I didn't really like this ending because it didn't leave it open if the future was altered. If anything, the first film indicated it can't be altered. But now I look at this thinking, well, we could have saved us some pretty unnecessary follow ups. Tiny Grandma Tiny. Because if a machine can learn the value of human life, maybe we can too. I think people would have seen it as corny if it stopped here, though. So maybe it's a pick your poison type deal. For me, though, Terminator 2 is about as perfect an action film as you can get. I agree. Because it isn't just the action that's so good in it. Its acting is fantastic. I'm kind of shocked no Oscar nods ever came out of it. The direction is poignant, the callbacks are earned, the threats feel real, the effects are still brilliant, and everybody in it is charming and likable. Anytime it starts to lean towards something maybe a little too silly, it balances out with the intimidating moments that are intense and suspense. The same way the first Terminator was chosen by the Library of Congress to go into the National Film Registry to be preserved, I think this film should too. It's not one of the Citizen Kanes of drama, but I would argue it's one of the Citizen Kanes of action, and action does play a big part in entertainment. Yes. It's timeless in so many ways great films should be timeless, and despite it still being massively popular, I think it deserves more respect for the impact that it had. So keep watching it, keep talking about it, and let's never let the respect for this amazing movie ever die. Nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. But in this case, you should. Yeah, so. <laughs> you just can't go around killing people. Why? <laughs> God, okay. Yeah, Terminator 2, man. What is there to say about Terminator 2 other than just like, wow. Yeah, I, I agree. Wow. I, I, it, it still holds up. It's still amazing. It's like, it's arguably one of the greatest greatest action films of all time it's and one of the moments in my life where when i saw a film i was like why didn't i watch this so much sooner yeah so <clears throat> also like, i've been missing out on this for this long holy crap yeah also terminator 2 3d i don't know if y'all remember that it was an attraction at universal studios uh dude it was it was amazing because they actually got arnold linda and edward furlong to be in it and i'll say this it's corny as hell, but it actually is very, very good. Because it basically, uh, the Terminator takes John into the future to, like, blow up Skynet. And basically, just it it, it worked so well as because it was a stunt show. It was a 3D visual, like, a, like 3D visual like, epic. And <laughs> it, there's just so many silly lines in it that I just... I, I wish I could have seen it one more time before it closed down, but, ah, well. Um, but the Terminator films that came after this, I mean, what what's your opinion on the Terminator films that came after this? I mean, I know Salvation, a lot of people dislike very strongly. No, I I thought Salvation was kind of cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I watched uh, 3, and it wasn't really memorable compared to this. Yeah, 3 was not memorable, other than the, then, the ending was pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Salvation I saw in theaters, and it was, like, still not memorable, but I remember being like, ah, that was kind of cool, I guess. Like, that was kind of the side of it I wanted to see. I wanted to see it after everything went <laughs> The back. war. You wanted to see yeah. the war, yeah. Um, I mean, I thought it was kind of weird, like, where they had, like, the weird human-machine hybrid. I really didn't understand the point of that exactly me neither but i mean i thought like you know like seeing john connor trying to like just wreck machine stuff and him butt heads with other human command you know yeah kind of interesting well i would say if if handled by a better director 
and handled by and given a better script i think the film could have been something amazing because they had a lot of the visual stuff that i was expecting out of it you know the the doomsday scenario like like humanity's darkest hour and you know like on the brink of extinction i think that's great stuff and you had a great cast too i mean christian bale is john connor mm -hmm. Little miscasting with Bryce Dallas Howard because how can Bryce Dallas Howard be John's wife when she's actually younger than Claire Danes was? She's actually younger than Claire Danes, and Claire Danes was like was uh, Kat, was Kate Brewster in the third one. So how can Bryce Dallas Howard, someone who is younger, be portrayed? It's weird. I don't know. And then of course you know you had uh, Sam Worthington's character. I think is one of the characters you would really need to work on to make feel mm -hmm. a bit more original instead of instead of it, it i and then of course anton yelchin which rest in peace anton uh, uh as kyle reese i think he could have worked as like just you know young like you know un you know inexperienced like fighter and all this mm -hmm. and all that john takes him under his wing and then john realizes who he is and then boom it just yeah. goes from there but I would also love to have seen like them using the time displacement field because they talked about it, but they never showed it yeah. in in Terminator. And I would like to have seen how that how that system would have worked on a more like regular basis. But anyway, yeah this this is a this franchise started out amazing and has very slowly gone downhill and is now to the point where. I think a lot of people are just wishing that it would end already, that it would just be over. And I can agree with that. I can definitely agree with that to a certain extent because, damn, like, Dark Fate was not good. Dark Fate was just terrible. And Genesis wasn't that far behind either. Genesis had some interesting ideas, but... Mm, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I think that's going to do it. So this was Nostalgia Critic's review of Terminator 2 Judgment Day... Hopefully y'all enjoyed, and uh, maybe we'll see y'all in the next one. Who knows? But we'll see you then. Peace.